Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about senior care home products, and we'd like to thank Chastity Lilly for liking and sharing the podcast. In the U.S., the average life expectancy in 1900 was about 50, in 2015, around 78, and researchers saying people over 85, that age group is going to continue to increase. Baby boomers. And over 70% of seniors who are surveyed say they want to stay in their own home rather than moving into assisted living or staying with a family member. What do you consider a senior? Old people. <laughs> so the oldest person whose age was verified is Jeanne Clement of France. She was 122 years old. Hmm. She lived from 1875 to 1997. Wow. Amazing, huh? Mm-hmm. So some studies that I was reading, they suggest that people who walk fast live longer. Hmm. Seniors who worry about falling over, they fall over more than people who don't worry about it. <laughs> people in happy relationships live longer, and women live longer than men. Hmm. The AARP says the most dangerous room in the house is the bathroom, and about 80%... For seniors? For seniors, yes. And about 80% of the accidents are falls. The National Council of Aging says that falls were the leading cause of fatal injury in seniors. Hmm. The CDC says that they found that only about 19% of homes have grab bars in the bathroom for the shower, the tub, and the toilet. And in one study, they found that falls getting on and off the toilet are actually very high and suggest that all older homeowners should have grab bars around the toilet for support. Interesting. A University of Michigan study found a third of the people they interviewed that were 60 and older had a hard time getting in and out of the shower or tub. Mm. And they said that they were worried about slippery surfaces and they were using either a towel rack or the wall for support if they didn't have a grab bar. Mm. So one thing you can grab for older family members is a suction cup grab bar, and this will just stick in place. So you can have one as you enter the tub or the shower, just to give a little support if they have to step up over either the side of a tub or if they have a shower with a high curb on it. And it just gives you balance. It's not going to be support for a fall, Mm -hmm. but it's really good just for balance. You need to use these on solid material like ceramic tile. They're not going to work over grout lines or porous material. And I would look at medical supply or healthcare supply companies for quality bars. Mm -hmm. Then take them off and reset the suction cups on a schedule. That way it's going to maintain a good grip. Mm. Some of the top rated companies, Vive, it's V-I-V-E. And they have some of these suction cup bars with an indicator that turns red if the seal is lost. Oh, that's nice. Moen and Oxo, O-X-O, have top-rated suction bars. Yeah, can you spell Moen? Moen, M-O-E-N. Hmm. And for safety, have one as you enter the shower or the tub. That way it gives you support while you're getting in and out, and then at least two on the wall, and that's going to give you support while you're washing. Mm-hmm. I put one of these in my mom's condo after she told me she started to get a little dizzy washing her hair, mm-hmm. and she said it really made a difference just to give her a little bit of support. Thanks. Suction grab bars are great if you live in an apartment and can't modify the bathroom. Right. Yeah, that's very smart. And then also if you're traveling, you can bring it along with you. Who's going to take it I've with got, you? I've got my grab bar. Let's go. <laughs> and then if you want to protect yourself against a fall, you really need to install permanent grab bars. And this is going to be screwed into the studs, mm-hmm. and this will be fall protection. Pros recommend having an 18 to 24 inch grab bar mounted vertically as you enter the tub or the shower and the bottom of that bar should be about 32 to 38 inches from the floor Mm -hmm. and I would test that before you install it just you know because of your height see what's comfortable Mm -hmm. and then once you're inside you should have at least two horizontal bars 34 to 36 inches high from the floor And then on the back wall, you'd want it about 32 inches long or longer. Again, see what feels comfortable. And then if you add a small bar by the faucet, it's going to help you when you're adjusting the water temperature. Hmm. If you're using a tub, or let's say you have a tub-shower combo, if you have a second grab bar on the side wall under the main one, so if you're sitting in the tub, then you have something maybe a few inches up, maybe five to eight inches above the edge of the tub, that's going to help you sit down and get up, and then you can grab the higher bar for stability. 
So when my parents built down the addition, when Grandma came to live with them, right. they had a contractor come out, and I think uh, there's like three grab bars in my grandma's shower. Yeah, more the better. But they installed one that was, so it's at a diagonal. Okay. Because she used to have a chair that she sat in right. when yeah. she took a shower. Right. So Very safe. it was better that it was on a diagonal than just horizontal. Yeah, smart. When you're installing permanent grab bars, you want to screw into the studs for the greatest strength. So use a stud finder, locate and mark the studs. A couple top rated companies are Zircon and Franklin Sensors. So Zircon is Z-I-R-C-O-N. Mm -hmm. And if you have plaster walls, you should get a deep scan sensor. It's going to be easier to find the studs. You know Bosch and Ryobi also have stud finders now? Yes. <laughs> so if you're drilling through tile, you want to make sure that you're using a drill bit for glass and tile so you don't crack the tile. You want to drill slow and check the recommendations for misting the bit with water to keep it cool. Mm -hmm. It's also going to add life to the tip. If you go too fast into like ceramic tile with these ceramic bits, right. they just glow and snap off. <laughs> For the tub in the shower, you can get grab bars that are decorative. You can also get it integrated with either a soap dish or a shelf, and there are grab bars with towel racks. Wow, fancy. I would compare the weight limits and then also see what other bath accessories are available. So some companies like Moen and Delta, they have grab bars that match the color or the design of their other bath fixtures. Oh, that's nice. So that way, if you're, especially if you're remodeling a home for a family member, you mm -hmm. can get all of the fixtures to match. Right. So it doesn't look so, you know, so much Industrial. like a hospital. Right, exactly. Or like a hospital. Mm-hmm. For bathtubs, you can get a handle that clamps onto the top edge of the tub for support. It can also be removed and repositioned. And there are vertical bars that go from the floor to the ceiling that have adjustable handle bars. And you can use this by the tub, the shower, or the toilet. Some of these expand and lock into place. Some you can screw into place. And if you have a wall next to the toilet, some pros are suggesting put a grab bar at a 45 degree angle, the lower part of the bar closest to the toilet and angling up and away. And that's gonna provide a better grip like your grandma mm -hmm. in her shower. Many of the pros are suggesting one bar behind the toilet and one bar on the side of the toilet. For the back wall, they're suggesting a bar 36 inches long, 33 to 36 inches from the floor. Again, adjust it depending on your height. And the side wall, they suggest a 42-inch long bar starting 12 inches from the back wall. Hmm. To make it easier to get on and off a toilet, you can get an ADA toilet. So that's going to be 16 and a half inches from the floor to the top of the bowl. Although there are toilets up to 19 inches tall from hmm. the floor to the top of the bowl. And if you have knee or hip problems, it just makes it easier for a lot of people. Well, unless you're short. Right, right. So you should measure it. If you are short, then it would probably I don't be see grandma hopping down off a toilet <laughs> right so if you do plan on getting a new toilet i would look at the map score it's capital m small a capital p or i would look for the water sense label the water sense label is a nice balance between the amount of water used while flushing and the flushing power mm -hmm. the map score 350 or higher is going to be good flushing you're not going to get as many clogs and the best flushing toilets have a score of over 600 mm -hmm. and then another thing i would look at is the footprint how wide is the bottom of the toilet and also the tank if you have flooring or wall covering that needs to be covered right and then the rough in size from the toilet bolts that hold the toilet down to the wall a standard toilet is 12 inches Especially toilets are going to be 10 to 14 inches. So if you have a family member in an older home, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not the standard 12-inch rough-in. Didn't we just cover this in a toilet episode? Yes, so check out the toilet <laughs> episode. Fantastic. If you don't plan on changing the toilet, you can get a raised toilet seat. Mm -hmm. So they come 2 to 6 inches thick, right. and it just makes it easier to sit down and stand up from a toilet. So Grandma had some of these, and uh, some of them just sit on the toilet seat. They don't lock in place. Okay. So that was good, like when we were traveling to uh, somebody right. else's house. To right, that exactly. With. And then the one that she had permanently was screwed into place. Right. And some of these seats come with removable or permanent arms. Mm -hmm. That way it's it much easier to push yourself up. And when you're shopping for toilet seats, make sure you check to see whether you need a standard or elongated seat. A standard size is going to be about 16 and a half inches from the bolts that hold the seat onto the bowl to the front of the bowl. Mm -hmm. Elongated is going to be about 18 and a half inches. Which these don't go over the toilet seat. It goes underneath the toilet seat. 
in most cases, you can replace the toilet seat. Well, like Grandma Day just lifted it up and, and put it on the bowl. Oh, I see. So the normal toilet seat is up and this right. just sits on the yeah. bowl itself? Oh, interesting. Okay. And like the locking one was nice because as she got older, she would just kind of fall back in onto the toilet. Okay. Which, if it wasn't locked in place, right, it right. could have been a problem. Right, absolutely. Some top-rated raised toilet seats. Vive. It's V-I-V-E. Carex Health, C A R E X, and Essential Medical Supply. I'm sure Grandma's going to be real happy if she knew I was talking about her and being on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> the AARP recommends using a bath or shower seat as you get older, and that's going to help reduce the chances of a fall. Mm -hmm. And these seats can come with armrests or back support. The height can be adjusted on most of them, and you can also get transfer chairs. So this slides in and out of the bath or the shower, and that's for someone in a wheelchair or a walker. Well, this is what Grandma has now. So okay. it's like a bench. You it's... just kind of slide her in. Yeah, much easier. Huh? Mm -hmm. When you're shopping, you want to compare the weight capacities, the height adjustments, the seat style, and the pad. Any type of handles or back support. Make sure it has corrosion-resistant material and non-slip feet, and then compare the warranty. Some top-rated companies, Moen. Essential Medical, and Drive Medical. It's D-R-I-V-E. In a shower or tub, install a handheld shower head. And if you plan on remodeling your own home or for a family member, you should really think about what's going to make it easy to get in and out of a shower or a tub mm -hmm. so you can install low-curb showers or wheelchair-accessible showers. You can also get tubs that have a door that oh. open and close. And there are a lot of kits, so shower enclosure kits that are easy to install and they're going to be ADA compliant. Okay. A single handle shower or tub faucet with a large lever is going to be the easiest to turn on and off. And then get some type of non-slip strips or a non-slip bath mat for the flooring. Mm -hmm. And when you're comparing bath mats, the more suction cups it has, the better the grip. Mm -hmm. If you plan on remodeling a bathroom, you can add lighting in the shower or the tub. More light is better as you get older. Yeah, Grandma's bathroom has this uh -huh. for a shower. It makes a big difference. Yeah, it's great. If you have an exhaust fan, you can also add a humidity sensor, and it's automatically going to turn on and off when the humidity level gets too high, and this is going to help keep the mirrors and surfaces drier. You're going to have less chance of mold and mildew. Hmm. And then adding night lights in the bathroom, lighted switches or outlets, it's going to make it safer when seniors are getting up and going to the bathroom at night. Mm-hmm. The Byrne Foundation of Philadelphia recommends water temperatures at around 120 degrees Fahrenheit for safety and energy savings if you have a home with seniors in it. At 120 degrees Fahrenheit, it takes more than five minutes to get a burn. Hmm. 130 degrees Fahrenheit, about 30 seconds to get a burn. 140 degrees, only five seconds. And at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, it only takes two seconds to get a burn. Wow. So to check the temperature, you're going to turn on the hot faucet only, allow it to run for three to five minutes, then get a tall glass and fill it. Use a meat or a candy thermometer, and that's an easy way to check what your temperature hmm. is. Interesting. Do you want to explain how to adjust the temperature on a water heater? So if you have a gas water heater, most are preset to around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I would look at the manual first for any tips, but there's going to be an adjustment dial on the gas valve on the bottom of the water heater if it's gas. It's generally going to be just marked hot or warm or vacation. It's going to have a bunch of small notches where you can turn this dial. Hmm. So if the temperature is too high, you're going to adjust the dial down, wait a few hours, then you're going to have to test it again and just keep changing this dial, waiting a couple of hours until you get around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And then what I would do is, once you have it at that temperature, you can take a magic marker and mark the dial. That way you can put it 120 degrees. Or if you want different settings, you know, you can find the temperature and use a marker right on the dial. So it doesn't have to be a magic marker. I would always suggest using a magic <laughs> marker. For an electric water heater, I would check the manual first for any tips, but in general, you need to turn off the power to the water heater and then confirm it with an electrical tester. I like a non-contact electrical tester because it's easy, and a shock under the right conditions can be deadly, so always turn off the electric. Mm -hmm. Most of the electric water heaters are going to have two thermostats, so you're going to have an upper cover and a lower cover, which you're going to have to remove. Most are going to have insulation that you have to remove. And then there's going to be an inner cover on some. 
but there's going to be a dial that shows hot, warm, or vacation. Some mm -hmm. might have a temperature. You can use a slotted screwdriver and turn that down slightly. Make sure that the upper and the lower thermostat are on the same settings. You're going to have to put everything back on, put your cover back on, turn the power back on, wait a couple hours and test the water. And you're going to have to repeat this till you get it right at 120 degrees. And then it makes sense to check your manual because there are some manufacturers that recommend that the upper thermostat is slightly higher than the bottom thermostat. Hmm. So in that case, you'd have your upper thermostat around 120, your lower thermostat just under that, maybe around 115. Okay. For the bedroom, you can get bed assist rails. So this is going to help you get in and out of the bed. Some have sides to prevent you from rolling out of the bed while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. And then that bar we talked about in the bathroom next to the toilet or the tub, right. you can use that in a bedroom also. That goes from the floor to the ceiling. It has an adjustable handle, and that makes it easier to get in and out of the bed. A couple of the top-rated bed assist rails is Bed Cane, C-A-N-E, bed rail and drive medical bed assist handle. Hmm. And then a couple studies recommend adjusting your box spring and mattress thickness. So the top of the bed is 18 to 23 inches from the floor. Mm -hmm. So depending on your height, you'd want to adjust that. But that's that height is going to make it easier to get in and out of the bed. Right. And in the bedroom, you want to add night lights and also just make it brighter in general. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather had made a step for Grandma to get into bed because no, she's so short. Okay. And they had a really thick mattress, so it was hard for her to get in. Right. And so she was still using that when she moved in with my parents. And so, I mean, it was years of her painfully Struggling, trying right. to get onto the step. And then finally my mom decided we should just remove the bed frame. Right. So, wow, did that make a difference? <laughs> now she can just, like, fall into bed yeah, instead yeah, of nice. you yeah, know, smart. trying to get her to step up. If you're remodeling the kitchen or if you plan on replacing appliances, look at the ADA products. Mm -hmm. So you can get refrigerators, dishwashers, ranges, cooktops, microwaves. There's a bunch of different appliances, even countertop appliances that are easier to turn on and off. Mm -hmm. And many of these are designed to prevent accidental exposure to hot surfaces or it limits the chance of a shock. Okay. A couple of other things that the pros are suggesting is better lighting in the kitchen cabinets with pull-out shelves or pull-down cabinets. Mm -hmm. And then if you're changing the cabinets, if you install the upper cabinets about three inches lower than normal, mm -hmm. it's much easier. And also glass doors to see what's inside the cabinets. Oh. A single-handle faucet with a pull-out faucet is going to be easier and motion sensor light switches. Okay. The National Fire Protection Association says that ranges or cooktops cause the majority of all home fires and deaths from fire. And the highest percentage is from people walking out of the kitchen and not watching what they're cooking. Mm -hmm. More than half of all injuries from fires are from the homeowner trying to put out the fire themselves. Mm. Another interesting stat, they're saying that electric ranges are responsible for more fires than gas ranges, huh. which I wouldn't have guessed. There's a company called Stovetop Fire Stop, and they have this fire suppression device that can be easily installed over a cooktop. So you can put this in the hood vent, under an over-the-range microwave, or under the upper cabinet. And the way it works is these canisters have a wick on it, so if there's a high flame on your stovetop, it ignites the wick, and then it releases this fire suppressant. Mm -hmm. And the chemical is designed to be easy to clean up. Mm -hmm. You should also have an easy-to-use fire extinguisher available, and the aerosol-type fire extinguishers are easier for seniors to use. You're just going to remove a cap or a tab and then press a top button or pull a trigger. Mm -hmm. A couple of the top rated are Tundra Fire and Fire Gone. The Mayo Clinic has some tips for parents that are getting older. So they're suggesting to go through all of their shoes and replace them with good quality, non-skid, comfortable shoes. Hmm. Remove all tripping hazards throughout the house, so check electrical cords. What's plugged in? Are the cords a tripping hazard? Look at phone cords and add more lighting. They're suggesting night lights throughout the house, brighter light bulbs, get lighted switches. And then any steps should have handrails on both sides, inside oh. and outside the house. And put non-slip treads on all wood steps, inside and outside. And then get your parents reachers so they can grab items up high and down low. Like a grabber? Like a grabber. Like the, what, what would you call it? I would call it a grabber. Okay. Get a grabber. <laughs> I have some top tips from aging experts. They're saying have non-slip flooring in all entryways. 
lever style door handles throughout the house. It's going to make it easier to open and close doors. Thresholds for any floor transitions. Make sure they're not a tripping hazard. Remove the heavy dark curtains throughout the house and get window covering that allows the maximum amount of light in but provides some privacy. Hmm. The side lights on entry doors, cover them with privacy film that allow the most amount of light. Doorbells have a flashing light or security camera attached to the doorbell for seniors. Smoke and fire detectors should have a flashing light and then also get the styles with a 10 year non removable battery. Hmm programmable thermostats, low pile carpet throughout the house, and then remove or secure any area rugs or mats. Right. They say that's a real big tripping hazard. Get a TV amplifier or a headset for the TV so they can hear it easier. Mm -hmm. And then easy to use tools in the kitchen. Get electric corkscrews, automatic jar openers, or these big handle tools, much easier to operate. Amplified telephones with big buttons makes it easier to use. Magnifying glasses, they have a style that you can either put on your tabletop or they've got floor mount ones that you can put next to a chair and it makes it easier to read. Huh. Use contrasting colors or colored tape on any areas that could be potentially a tripping hazard to draw someone's attention to it. And they're saying red and yellow next to each other tested the best for catching people's attention. Exciting. A study done by Michigan State University found that seniors who use computers and other technology have about a 30% lower risk of depression. Mm. So smart speakers or digital assistants like Google Assistant, Alexa, Echo, or Siri, these can be helpful because now just from your voice, you can control lights, your thermostat, your door locks. Mm -hmm. There's reminders. You can ask it to play music or the news. Right. And more and more devices around the house are being connected to these devices. Mm -hmm. There's a voice-activated talking clock called Reminder Rosie that you program with your voice for reminders. Mm -hmm. So you put in the time and the date, and you can use your own voice to say, Hey, Mom, it's time to feed the cat or take out the dog, or it's time to take your pills. And then the person has to verbally say they did it to turn it off, or they manually have to turn off the reminder. Oh, nice. Some other technology to make life easier for seniors, you can get a robot lawnmower or a robot vacuum. Mm. There's electronic food and water dispensers for your pets. And check out Blue Frog Robotics. They have a robot called Buddy. Mm -hmm. This thing rolls around the house, and you can use it like a hub for your thermostat and lights. It connects to a, a lot of different things in your home, and you can tell it to make adjustments on these items. Its face becomes a tablet, so you can connect to the Internet or connect to a smartphone for a video call. It has fall detection for seniors and medicine reminders. It also has a security mode, so it can monitor motion or if someone opens a window or a door, and it'll set off alarms. Oh, nice. So just pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to add? So most of the tips we talked about are getting a home ready for someone as they get older. But if you have a family member with a wheelchair or walker, you're going to need to make more modifications to the door and hallway width. You're going to need room to turn around. And then you have to plan for ramps or chair lifts. If you need to remodel for senior care, I would look for a professional that's certified through the National Association of Home Builders, and they have a certified aging in place specialist program, oh, nice. and they're going to be up to date on all of the standards. Hmm. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, iHeartRadio, and CastBox. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy at fixitcohost on Twitter. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you be, 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 do you be